Tip number seven is to accept what happens. So to Seneca, the happy life lies in your own mind and judgment, as we just said. And you have to be grounded and place your mind be beyond fear and beyond your emotions. And this is the meaning of freedom to the Stoics. Because you can't control, as we said, any external things. So a mind that is free and grounded can no longer be affected by any kind of external chance. Or as Seneca says, it can't be affected by uh, fortune and also the influences of others. So if you remain grounded in spite of these, then when bad circumstances happen to you, you just recognize that they are external and you have no control over them and you can remain calm in spite of them. And this is the essence of accepting what happens. And also another one of the maxims of Stoicism, even in our modern day language, this is what we mean when we say you to remain Stoic. So think, for example, of two people. The first person, they, they spill over a cup of water by accident. Now the first person can get angry at this. And, you know, it was completely unexpected. He knocked over the cup of water, let's say, like, got all over his work papers, and he's mad and angry, and it affects the rest of his day. Now the second person... The Stoic, when they knock over a cup of water, instead of being angry and letting it affect their day, they recognize that it's something that they had no control over. So they simply clean it up and go about their day. And you can see how that simple, really, really simple mindset shift can make a huge impact on the, the rest of your day, the rest of your life, how you live your life, and overall your happiness. So remain stoic when bad things happen and recognize that they are beyond your control. And instead, just deal with them when they come and remain calm and you'll be much happier overall. Tip number eight is to find joy within yourself. What this means is that you don't need anything but yourself to be happy. And when you come to terms with yourself and your own inner joys, then you no longer, not only do you no longer need anything to be happy, but you no longer desire anything but your own inner passions as well. And when you realize this, this is the importance of this tip, you can be happy anywhere. And this is a, a huge realization. So this is present in other Stoic writers as well. I, I believe in Epictetus, you know, because your mind is the only thing you have control over and your happiness is comes from your mind and you ha you have already recognized that you don't have control over external things you can literally be happy anywhere so if anywhere where your mind still exists so if you were th put in jail if a stoic was put in jail he could still remain happy let's say he was put in jail because he was wrongly accused he knows he did nothing wrong even though they put you in jail they really only put your body in jail and your mind is is still intact you can still be in possession of your own sanity so you can still be happy anywhere no matter what happens to you and that's very very important and once you realize this, and if you actually implement it, you can literally find happiness in situations that otherwise would have made you angry and would have led to you being depressed, sad, upset, whatever. Tip number nine is to be content with what you have. So Seneca says that the happy man is content with his present lot no matter what it is, and he's reconciled to his circumstances. So since happiness is internal, and we've already said that you can't rely on external things to be happy, you can still be confident in yourself and be an architect of your own life. So external, you know, Seneca says that external things, they do nothing for your happiness. And we can see this easily. You know, after all, how many people spend their lives chasing external things and are still not happy? And nor are they any closer to the happy life than anyone else. 
Tip number 10 is to recognize that you are not perfect. Seneca recognizes this himself in the essay, and he recognizes that he's not perfect. You know, at the end of the day, we're only human, and you can only ever do your best, and that's all that matters. We often spend a lot of time trying to attain perfection, but we never really live up to it fully. And as a result of that, we become disappointed in our shortcomings. So we try to be perfect, but we end up failing, and then we end up becoming upset. And the Seneca, this is the, right, the wrong mindset. It doesn't matter that we're not able to reach perfection or that we're not perfect or, you know, that we set a goal for ourselves but we fail. To the Stoics, it's the journey that matters, not the destination. So it doesn't matter that you set a goal for yourself but you fail. Let's say you wanted to be a pro basketball player and you spent many years of your life trying but it just never worked out and you ended up failing. And instead of being depressed, miserable, sad, because of that, the Stoics would say that instead you should focus on what you learned on the on the path to trying to obtain that goal. Because after all, it's the, on the journey where you actually learn and you grow as a human. So it matters more that we never stop improving. Or as Seneca said, it matters more that we simply are better than the crowd below us. Many of us believe that the happy life is synonymous with the pleasurable life. But Seneca says that pleasure is not necessary for a happy life. So Seneca, he asks us this deep, really deep question here that he, he sets to us. And he says, if you give in to something as simple as pleasure, how will you act when something truly bad happens? If you give in to pleasure, how will you act in the face of your own death or in a situation where you can't give in? Like, let's say a murderer is about to murder your family. And that's a situation where you can't give in. You can't let your emotions take control of you. You have to be a master of your own emotions, of your own pleasure. So he says the happy man is master over his pleasure. And because he's been over, been able to conquer his pleasure, he's also been able to conquer pain. Tip number 12 on Seneca's How to Live a Happy Life. And this is something that we've kind of been building up to throughout the course of this entire video. And that is the secret to live a happy life, according to Seneca and according to other Stoics, is to live in accordance with nature. And I've even mentioned this multiple times throughout this video. And Seneca as well mentions it multiple times throughout his essay. He says, therefore, to live happily is the same thing as to live according to nature. See, the Stoics believe that there's a natural order to everything. And in order to live life, you have to live in accordance with that nature. And what that means is not worrying about external things, things that you have no control over. You know, ultimately to the Stoics and to Seneca, you only have control over one thing, and that is your own mind and your own reactions to external things that you have no control over. Now to Seneca, your happiness is also a part of your mind. So your happiness is something that you have control over. And for that reason, you can't follow the crowd. You know, following the crowd is not the correct path to happiness. You have to do what's best for you and not what's best for everyone else. So you have to trust in your own judgments and not the judgments of others. While at the same time, freeing yourself from the opinions of others. And as Seneca says, then you will be made whole. So also, you know, things that are external, as we said, you, those aren't under your control. So don't worry about things that aren't under your control. By doing this, you'll have a clear mind. You'll accept what happens to you. Find joy within yourself. Become content with what you have. And at the same time, recognize that you are not perfect. And if you do all of these things, you will live a much happier life than the crowd, than the herd, than everyone else. 
it's guaranteed that you will live a, a much better and happier life if you do all these things and if you recognize not to worry about things that aren't under your control and to live in accordance with your own nature. And remember, you're not perfect. It's not the end goal that matters. Even though you may set a goal for yourself, it doesn't so much matter if you try to obtain that goal and fail. It's much more important that you took the time to follow the path and the journey that led you ultimately to there because it's on the journey that we grow as humans. So do all of this and you will be a lot happier. These are Seneca's 12 tips on how to live a happy life.